professionals. We received several questions before this presentation today. And if you have questions during the presentation, we'll, be, we'll do our very best to answer those as time allows. Please feel free to email your questions at any time to info at CISD.org. The presentation, as I mentioned, is being recorded. It will be on our website in English and Spanish. So I'd also like to thank Lucy Jones from Corsicana High School for translating the presentation into Spanish for us. Tonight, we're addressing our in-person learning families for our elementary campuses and Collins Intermediate School. So this will cover grades K through six. Thank you again for joining us. We cannot wait for the next 20 days when our students arrive on September 8th to our campuses. Thank you, Dr. Frost. Good evening, my name is Dr. Elmer Villaneda and the following informational slides are gonna provide an overview of the district safety measure as it relates to the upcoming school year. For the past several months, there have been various meetings held, both at the campus level and at the district level. Every single one of those meetings has had the same constant, the safety of our students, our staff, and our community. So let's get started with safety first. Corsican ISD students and staff will be asked to self-screen for COVID-19 symptoms before entering any CISD facility. We're, we're taking an altruistic values approach. We want every single person in our community to take care of each other and implement the take care of Corsicana mentality. So we're asking respectfully that parents, please make sure that we're health screening the, your students before they come to school. For example, if your student has shortness of breath, vomiting, or a high fever, please do not send them to school. We are asking the same thing out of our staff across the district. Face covering, it's time to mask up. We're asking that every single student, third grade and up, and staff to wear clean face coverings over their nose and mouth for the 2020-2021 academic school year. These coverings can be any color or any type as long as they're clean and free of political advertising and appropriate for a school setting. The reason we're doing this is because research and CDC guidelines suggest that face coverings and face shields diminishes and minimizes the transmission of the virus. Social distancing. The course can ISD students and staff will be ask to socially distance, distance while indoors whenever possible. When students are outside and able to socially distance, masks will not be required. When students are outside, for example, for physical education class or a recreational class of any kind, uh, they will not be required to wear masks. However, every single campus throughout the district will make the effort to socially distance while indoor throughout the academic school year. The district is asking for every single student and, and will be providing every single student training on proper hand washing protocols. In addition, hand sanitizers will be available throughout each campus and classroom. There will be an increase in sanitation measures. Daily campus cleanings will occur. Each classroom and every restroom will be disinfected daily. All frequent touch areas will be disinfected daily. Those areas such as doors, bathrooms, et cetera, will be cleaned daily. Again, our staff will be asked to wear masks and gloves during the school hours. The cafeteria will be also be disinfected between lunch and breakfast periods. That's gonna be an added measure to diminish or minimize the transmission of this virus. In addition, staff will have access to disinfectant wipes to sanitize working surfaces and shared objects. And there will be improved additional cleaning measures implemented for any COVID positive case on any campus. Good evening, my name is Shade Bowyer. Um, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about campus visitors. Um, Going into this year, it's going to be um, 
a big priority for us to limit the outside traffic onto our campuses. And a big part of that is going to be to limit the campus visitors. Uh, campus visitors will be screened for COVID-19 symptoms in addition to other health and safety protocols. All visitors will be required to wear masks when entering the building. Understand that, that a lot of these procedures will look different depending on what campus your student attends uh, as the entrances to a lot of those buildings are set up differently. So there, 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 uh, there could be a little bit different framework to how that's gonna go down for a visitor that comes on the campus. To coincide with that, at this time, we're gonna minimize exposure to other students and staff. We're not allowing visitors on campus for lunch. Lunch times for students will be staggered in cafeteria or in the classrooms to ensure social distancing. Um, again, a lot of the campuses will have different procedures depending on the grade levels that they have on those campuses, depending on the options that they've got to feed students on those campuses. So, and, th and they may also be going through a rotating schedule with that during the week to ensure uh, that there is distancing while the students are eating. Our health resources. Uh, the first major one is going to be your campus nurses. Uh, we've got tr a tremendous nursing staff uh, within the district. There's, there's, there's not one weak link on any of our campuses, nor in the leadership with the nursing staff. Uh, each campus has a registered nurse RN <clears throat> to assist students with health related services, such as administering medications and providing resources to parents and families. Um, this year, the nurses will help guide lessons on mitigation strategies to protect students and staff while at school. Uh, these lessons that the nurses are putting together as we speak will, will be meant to inform as well as to create good habits uh, amongst the student body as well as the staff. The nurses will be instrumental in implementing uh, and helping to identify isolation strategies of COVID-19 cases. Uh, their professional opinions will play a major role in determining uh, if a student is truly symptomatic. Uh, I'm gonna go over the, the uh, latest list of approved symptoms here in a little while, but it is a healthy list that are also applicable to a lot of sicknesses that our students could have. So we're gonna lean heavily on our nursing staff uh, to make a lot of those decisions alongside campus administration. Good evening, I'm Stephanie Howe. I'm going to speak to you about counseling services. We have counselors available on each campus with the addition of two student support counselors this year. These counselors will assist our students with their social and emotional needs throughout the year. Uh, we also have a counselor support line. That phone number is 903-641-2334. If a student needs to reach out immediately, that will be open uh, Monday through Fridays and extended hours. We also have an email that it's at counselors support at CISD.org. So if you have other questions or needs, please email our counselors and one of them will get back to you within 24 hours. Bus transportation. Students will be required to wear a mask on the bus. Elementary students will ride two to a seat. Secondary students will ride one to a seat unless they have family members on that same bus. We will have multiple routes to accommodate students throughout the mornings and the afternoons. And bus drivers will also disinfect in between each bus route. Parents and students will, ask, will be asked to self-screen for COVID-19 symptoms. And also remember, if you need to sign up for bus for transportation options, to call our bus office, transportation office at 903-872-4181. And then child nutrition. This year, every student in CISD will receive a free breakfast and free lunch this year. Um, students will have breakfast in the classroom. And then at lunch, depending on the campus, they will have in the classroom or in the cafeteria. Good afternoon. My name is Kim Holcomb and I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction. Um, I'm going to talk to you for just a brief moment about instruction and attendance. Parents have been asked to select one of three learning options for their students. That would be an on-campus or virtual instruction. The virtual instruction has two options, self-paced or guided by a teacher, which is considered the synchronous model. Tonight, we're going to talk about the on-campus learning model. If a student has to leave on-campus instruction due to quarantine or isolation, 
they may continue their lessons online in either of the two virtual formats. That would be synchronous or asynchronous. If they need to change their learning method, they may do so at the end of the nine week session. We are asking parents to commit to one of the three uh, learning methods to start the year, but they can make changes in that at the end of the nine week period. Student attendance will be taken every day in each of the three models. The in-person instruction will be Monday through Friday, regular school hours. Students will be doing projects and assignments online and doing things in a blended fashion. We will be devoting time at the very beginning of the school year for social and emotional lessons, as well as safety and health protocols, and an ample amount of time dedicated to learning our student learning management system, which is Canvas. Canvas will house all of our instructional materials, assignments, uh, teacher videos and instruction, and students will be able to access that on a daily basis. They will have an easy transition to virtual if needed due to the training that we will be doing at the very beginning of the school year to make sure that our students are fluent in accessing all of the components of the learning management system. The students in the on-campus grade level or on the on-campus um, instructional models will be assigned to a grade level teacher. In the pre-K through third grade, they will be assigned to a single teacher. In fourth through sixth grade, the teachers will rotate to the students and the students will stay with their homeroom. This will minimize students transitioning or exposing themselves to other classmates in other classes. So uh, this will be a traditional schedule. They will have all their core courses as well as elective classes. They will leave class for PE and recess and they will be out um, for uh, socially distancing and following safety measures. But for their core electives for music, art and computer, the teachers will rotate to them to their classrooms. So they will leave class for PE and recess but for the remainder of their day, they will stay in the classroom. What do students need to bring? We are encouraging students to bring their own masks to school, which can be decorative as mentioned before. Uh, CISD will be providing um, the masks for the students. We are also asking that they bring a backpack without wheels, continue to wear standardized dress, and a water bottle with their name is optional, but is highly encouraged. We will, for safety reasons, be closing the water fountains for drinking, but they will be available for students to refill a water bottle um, as needed. If they do not have a water bottle to bring to school, we will be providing um, bottles of water at the very first few weeks of school. What will CISD provide? We will provide an electronic device for each student. We are now one-to-one -one in Corsicana ISD. Uh, also, basic school supplies for in-person learners, such as pencils, glue, scissors, all the things that the students will need will be provided by our district. Also, remember free breakfast and lunch for all students and also bus transportation if you have requested that. All right, what is close contact? And, and understand that the definition of close contact is extremely important in everything that we do because it's what guides um, our uh, flow chart for tracing and all decisions that we make in terms of student or staff isolation. So close contacts defined as having direct contact to secretions from an individual who is symptomatic or test positive, being within six feet of a COVID positive person or symptomatic person for a cumulative duration of 15 minutes. A confirmed, a confirmed case on campus notification. Corsican ISD will inform the campus community staff and parents of a confirmed positive test from an individual who was present on that campus. The email notice will include the last date that the person was on campus. And we will send that out through our uh, student, student messenger platform. I think the new name for it is gonna be Parent Square. Uh, and parents and staff will receive email and text uh, notices when we do have a positive case confirmed on campus. Close contact notification, meaning, in, meaning anyone who was um, within what I just gave you, that definition of close contact of an individual who is presumed to be positive. It's a, in, in addition, during contact tracing, if the COVID positive person was in close contact with a specific uh, person or people, those individuals will be contacted separately and will need to quarantine for 14 days or is otherwise directed by a uh, physician. These notices will also be posted on the website under the COVID-19 resources page. 
Uh, CISD will not identify individuals by name in order to comply with both HIPAA and FERPA regulations to protect privacy. Student and staff positive test results. When a student or staff member receives a positive test result and the COVID positive person has been on campus within the last seven days, the last seven they should complete the student COVID reporting form or the staff COVID reporting form that's located on the CISD website under COVID resources. And I'll show you how to get to that page on, on the next slide, but I just want to reiterate that it is ultimately important that if you are symptomatic or you are positive, that you go in and you complete uh, that form that's on our website immediately. When that form is complete, and it's a short form, it's a quick five question form. Once it's completed, it sends in a notification immediately and triggers the process for us to begin notification and tracing uh, in, in order to ensure the safety for everybody else that remains on campus. Campus, uh, campus closure notice. Uh, camp in the event that a classroom or campus needs to close due to a high volume of COVID positive cases, notices will be sent via email, text message, and through phone calls. All right, here's, here's a, an example on the website of where the, where the reporting form is. You can go in and you can get to the reporting form through the parents and community uh, tab at the top of the page or the staff page. If you go to the staff page, it'll take you to a COVID drop as well. Uh, but you can see it right there, whether you're reporting staff or student, click on it, very easy form to submit. And uh, again, that's what triggers the entire process to start for us. All right, last slide for me. Po positive COVID-19 students should seek medical advice and remain home for at least 14 days. That's a, that's a very, very uh, bottom line rule right there. If, if, you're not, if you're not sure, but you think you may be positive or someone in your home may be positive, then take it seriously. Uh, we've all got to try to be very, very unselfish during this time and, and that could mean uh, making ourselves uncomfortable in, in doing so. Uh, I'm gonna read the COVID-19 symptoms to you. These are the most recent that are put together and approved by TEA and uh, the CDC. Uh, feeling feverish uh, or measured temperature greater or equal to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, loss of taste or smell, cough, difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, fatigue, headache, chills, sore throat, congestion or runny nose, shaking or exaggerated shivering, significant muscle pain or ache, diarrhea or vomiting. If you are experiencing any of these or anyone at home is experiencing any of these, please submit the self-reporting form uh, so that we can go to work with you immediately and uh, maintain the safety of staff and students at CISD. Student registration. There is a parent commitment form that we're asking that you um, complete and fill out. It is available online and is, is currently on our website for you to complete if you haven't already. If you have already made a commitment and decide to change the way that your child is going to access their instruction, you may make changes on the website. In addition, there is a new student enrollment packet that is open now if you need to complete an enrollment form. Uh, they are available online on the website. There is also a student uh, first day packet. They will be available on August the 24th. Those will be available to be picked up in person at a campus or if you choose available online. Each campus will be conducting parent meetings or having scheduled class pickups. Stay tuned for more information for each of your campuses. Um, they will be posting the times and the dates and how to access those meetings that will be upcoming. Thank you very much for keeping um, our school safe. We are all in this together. We are looking forward to a wonderful school year. Mm -hmm. and we look forward yeah, to seeing our students. Good night. No, but I remember nothing. Well, I mean, I'm just going to introduce the Q&A. I think that lady. Hello, I'm Susan Johnson. I'm the Executive Director of Communications for Corsicana ISD. And we have been taking your questions that you have been emailing in, and so we are delighted to take those questions tonight. 
Um, any questions that you don't hear tonight, go ahead and email those to info at CISD.org and we will answer those questions. Uh, we will also be adding on to our frequently asked questions, which are already online. Um, so do feel free to, um, to check there as well. Um, if you do email us, we will email you back a response in addition to responding um, to our frequently asked questions page. Um, so one of the first questions that you've had um, is, can parents come and eat with their child during lunch? Um, well, at this time, the answer is no. Um, because we want to try to minimize exposure to our students and staff, uh, we are asking that uh, we refrain from eating lunch with your child at this point. Um, and also because we're trying to socially distance all of our students. So it's going to be quite a task to get all of our students fed in the cafeteria and in the classrooms. So, um, so bear with us. Hopefully we'll be able to offer that again soon. Okay. Okay, so when is scheduled pickup? Um, hot off the press tonight, Mr. Dory, principal at Collins Intermediate School, has said uh, that Collins Intermediate School will have a scheduled pickup. It is a drive through pickup on August 31st. Um, fifth grade will be from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Is that correct? Okay, it's not at night, right? It's in the morning. Okay, in the morning, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, sixth grade will be from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. So again, that's Collins Intermediate School, August 31st, fifth grade, 8 a.m. to 12, and sixth grade, 12 to 4. So be looking for more information on that. We'll have that on our website and on all of our social media channels very shortly. Joy back in, say so. Um, so the then mute, there were several of you that asked about Meet the Teacher. Um, most of our elementary campuses are hosting a Meet the Teacher of some sort, of some virtual wonderful sort. Oh, yeah. So, that's um, so do stay in touch uh, with the campuses. Again, social media as well as our website. We will have information there for you to uh, make sure that we will promise you, you will have the information. Um, again, we'll be calling, emailing, making sure that you know when those dates are. Is it August 31? Um, so all students this year for Corsicana ISD will receive an electronic device. Um, this is something that we're really proud of and I know that our technology department has worked extremely hard um, to make this possible for our students. So um, for students who are um, enrolled in the virtual courses or the at home at the at home learning or the uh, virtual self paced. Um, they will be first to get their um, computers or devices issued to them and there will be a schedule that will be issued. It'll probably be by campus and that schedule will be out August 24th. Okay, so we will start um, August 24th with a uh, device device pickup. So again, stay tuned for more information on that. Do we have any more questions? Hmm? No, he said that he Okay, perfect. Um, okay, and then uh, the, the last question that I have here is, um, will parents be informed if your child is sick at school? And by all means, 100%, you will be the first person that we call. We do not want um, your child to be sick at school um, for any reason at all. So you will be the first to be informed. Um, until you can arrive at one of the campuses, um, our campuses have set aside some rooms that are designed um, to be appropriate for children who are sick. We're gonna make sure that they um, do have a mask on and that they're safe until you can get there. But we will ask that you um, arrive on campus as, as quickly as possible so that we can get your student well. Okay, um, I think that those are all the questions that I have at this point. Again, um, these presentations, um, the recorded versions will be posted online um, in English and in Spanish, and we will continue to update our frequently asked questions. Um, in addition, please do check our social media channels and um, stay tuned for more information. Uh, the next meeting will be tomorrow um, at 4.30, and that will be for our secondary campuses. 
So um, if there are things that you would like to know, please again, feel free to email us, info at CISD.org. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you all.